Hello, welcome to Tuesday Tea Time. I am here. I don't know how many of you are going to join me live and how many will watch this later, but I am here to chat a little bit as I do every Tuesday. And this Tuesday, I wanted to talk about getting back to work. So, for any of you who saw my post last week, um, my mother passed away last week. And this was a very sort of private process, so I didn't speak about it until after the fact. But the matter of the fact is that this has been going on for a couple of months now. And so for a couple of months, my mother's been ill and I've been spending a lot of time with her and honestly operating with the horses at a small percentage of my capability. And there's a lot to be said for that because there is a way of building relationship that is all about variety. And the more we can build relationship with our horses in a variety of ways, the more complex and beautiful that relationship becomes. So for the last couple of months, I have not had a lot of leadership to offer my horses. Um, my feel and my timing has been terrible in my opinion, because I was distracted. Um, I had a hard time focusing. I still showed up. Oh, my kitten wants to join us for tea time. This is Tig. Say hi, Tig. <laughs> um, so for the last couple of months, I've really leaned on the horses and the kitten <laughs> to give me some sort of comfort and some sort of solace throughout this process. I haven't had a lot to offer them in return other than my company. I still showed up, I still spent time with them, but for the past couple of months, I have been very careful not to push the edges of the comfort zone. For the past couple of months, I have showed up within the comfort zone. And one of the things that pretty much stopped happening was I stopped putting my stallions together unless everything was perfect. So that meant there had to be no wind. That meant um, I had to have observed really functional behaviors with them in their individual paddocks before I opened the gate between them. Hello, Laura. Welcome to tea time. So for the past three months, my stallions have not had a lot of social time. The nice thing about this week is I'm starting to feel like myself again. I'm starting to feel like my timing and my feel is coming back. My awareness is stabilizing. And I am in the round pen right now with Ari, who's behind me. And the beautiful thing is Atlas is also here. Now, it doesn't look like they are interacting at all, but that's actually kind of miraculous because I just opened the gate and I just brought them both in this space. And usually they would have to have some sort of a little confrontation that then I would have to moderate and in order to let them know that we were not gonna be doing any fighting while I was here with them. Today, none of that. I opened the gate, they came in together and they're completely at ease. Now, they're not in flow with each other. Ari's over here on one side, being his gorgeous self. And Atlas is over here on the other side, hanging out in the shade and ignoring us. It's not the kind of harmony and flow that I hope for long term. But the lack of aggression between them, without any moderation from me, without any food, to distract them without any grass, um, that's actually kind of a big deal. So this is pushing the edge of my comfort zone. Anytime I put my stallions together, I need to have a certain amount of feel and timing so that if we find ourselves right on the edge of our comfort zone, where the horses start reacting instead of responding, which means that they're more likely to go into fight or flight or freeze and less likely to go into think or yield or play. So if we're right there on the edge of the comfort zone, I need to have good enough feel and timing that I can respond appropriately. 
feel being, I know what to do. And timing, I know when to do it. Now, for the last couple of months, I have thought I've been a little bit in this sort of frozen state as I processed my mother's illness and not knowing what was going to happen. And I just didn't feel like I had the presence of mind to know what to do or when to do it. And so that meant it was really important that I stayed well within my comfort zone, that I didn't push the edges to the point where I was going to get myself in trouble. Now I've had a couple of days where I feel confident again. I feel like we can test the edges, but it's a little bit like if you're in the dark and you're trying to find where the edge of the stairs is with your feet, you can't see it. You know, it's there and you are just kind of feeling your way along to know where the edge is. That's a little bit like feeling the edge of the comfort zone. You know, if you are really ill or if you have vertigo or you're dizzy, it gets a lot more scary to feel for that edge of the stairs in the dark. And you know, that's when you might sit down and <laughs> feel for it with your hands instead of your feet. This analogy works for me because when I'm working with the horses, there's all sorts of work I can do in the comfort zone it helps me build my understanding of what feel and timing is for each individual horse. The better that gets, the more I can then take that understanding to the edge of our comfort zone. I can put us in situations where a little more fight or flight might happen, but I have a great enough understanding of the horse to know what to do and when to do it to nudge them back to those really good responses of thinking and yielding and play. So as I get back into work, it's really important that I feel for the edge of the comfort zone in a way that feels reasonable to me and to the horses. And I'm just going to take that a day at a time. I'm going to see how I feel each day. And I'm going to put myself in situations that feel reasonable for my state of mind and for the horses. So today it's really beautifully sunny. We have Ari behind me here and we have Atlas there. And I've been finding for the past couple of days, I've been able to leave these two together for three and a half, four hours at a time without having to be in the middle of them. Now, if I'm here, drinking tea as I am on a Tuesday tea time with you guys, um, I do find that the horses will often voluntarily put themselves on either side of me. It helps them feel better. It helps them feel like they're a little safer from each other. The interesting thing about these two stallions is they haven't quite figured out which one of them is dominant and I'm not willing to let them fight hard enough to figure that out. The couple of times when I've made a mistake and let them fight fairly hard, they then start trying to jump the fences to get away from each other. They don't want to let the other one win, but they don't want to be with the other one if fighting is likely. So I've had to be really careful about when I put them in the same space that I'm here with a good sense of feel and timing to help them if they get too close to the edge of their comfort zone. And if they are likely to fight, I watch their body language, I watch their signals, all of these things that I learned when we were in the comfort zone. We built the tool before we use it and learning those body signals, learning what that means inside the comfort zone means that then I can use it with good feel and timing when I'm outside the comfort zone. So, hello Pippa, love Florentine. Laurent says, on tough moments for us to just be with them and watching them is our relaxed private moment. They always give us peace in our heart and soul. That is very true. I am very, very grateful to Atlas and Ari for being here for me the last couple of months as I was processing the changes in my life. And I'm really glad that I finally can show up for them with a stronger presence and awareness now so that I can be here with good feel and good timing 
and we can start to nudge the edge of the comfort zone a little bit more so that we grow it and we stretch it. But it's really, really important that I have a sense that my feel and my timing is good enough to be able to reasonably live at the edge of the comfort zone. And I'm really pleased that I'm getting back to work, that I'm feeling like myself again. And my boys are here to help me. Now they may choose to put me in the middle for a while, even if I don't put myself there. Uh, Corinne says, how do you moderate when they're aggressive with each other? Um, so again, we built the tools before we use them. So both of these horses are really, really respectful for me when I asked them to take a walk. And we made sure that we built that when they were by themselves. And so if they start to get aggressive with each other, I ask them to take a walk. And we will walk for as far or as long as it takes for them to develop rhythm in their steps, rhythm in their breathing, bring their adrenaline down and have a more reasonable state of mind. We can do it through the woods, we can do it through the paddocks, we can do it through the pasture, we can do it in the round pen. Wherever we are, we can walk until they feel reasonable again. Um, now, I have to be careful that I respond before they get too intense because there's a window of opportunity where I can moderate. If they get too intense, I will not be able to moderate as well. And so that's one of the reasons, Corinne, that I was saying my feel and timing has to be reasonably good. So I'm aware enough to step in and help them while that window of opportunity is still open. And when I was feeling like I really wasn't present enough, it was important that I didn't put them together because I felt like it was likely I was not gonna notice that window of opportunity where it was possible to help them. Um, look at them though. They're the picture of calm now. <laughs> Uh, Beth says, Elsie, you're such an inspiration. Talking about comfort zones, it's so hard to stretch them for horses and humans. Um, you know, Beth, it's interesting. Um, I actually find the opposite is a little bit true for me. It's more of an act of willpower to not stretch the comfort zone for me. To be fully present and aware and stay within the comfort zone is a bigger challenge for me than it is to step to the edge of the comfort zone. The edge of the comfort zone is kind of exciting and entertaining and thrilling, and you might push too hard and then bad things will happen and it keeps you sharp. This practice of being meditative and allowing myself to fully embrace the learning that happens within the comfort zone, that's actually harder for me, um, but I think it's beautiful. And I love that I have had the chance to really immerse myself in that inside the comfort zone learning over the last couple of months. Even if I wouldn't have chosen it, it was good for me. It was very, very good for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Nikki, they are looking after me. Yeah. Laurence says they're so supportive when we suffer or feel much sadness. They are. For sure. And you know, my mares are as well, but there is something away the way the, the stallions look out for me, it's different. They are caretakers in a really beautiful and different way than the mares are. Yeah. Ooh, I lost all my comments. There they are. Learning to use. <laughs> yes, exactly, Lawrence. Me and my big red button. The edge of the comfort zone is something I joke about that is often my big red button. If there's a big red button, you just want to touch it, see what happens. And I very often see the edge of the comfort zone and I just want to touch it, just see if there's a reaction, just see if something interesting happens. And in this training without any tools, I'm becoming a lot more wise about observing the edge of the comfort zone being aware that it's there and seeing what work we can do on the edge without falling off the edge. What work can we do without triggering any fight or any flight? Yeah, it's exciting, but when you have no tools and you're working with two stallions that might hurt each other, you have to be a lot more aware of how far you push to the edge of the comfort zone. 
when do you retreat? When do you come back? Um, I have a huge respect for people who operate within the comfort zone more naturally than I do. And I keep trying to balance my personality. Um, it's the work I do. I love it. The big red button is there for me, but you can see Atlas and Ari, they're pretty comfortable and um, they're a little bit more engaged than they were earlier. There's no pushing the comfort zone. I think it's been really good for us to have the last couple of months where we spent a lot of time and I made a real effort to stay far away from the edge of the comfort zone. Now, now that I'm feeling better, my job will be to test the edge of the comfort zone in a way that's reasonable without getting too excited about it. So that's what I wanted to talk about today in tea time. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I think it's applicable to a lot of us. We're going to go through cycles where more work is appropriate and that work is going to be on the edge of the comfort zone to stretch it and grow it. And then there's going to be cycles of recuperation and healing and time where it is better to stay inside the comfort zone. Do the work that is good without getting close to the edge. And sometimes it feels like, oh, I'm not really doing any growing here or I'm on a plateau or nothing's changing. It's okay. Just be there. Give it some time. And then when you come back to work again, you're going to find that the horses have a whole deeper connection with you and they're ready to stretch the comfort zone in a way that perhaps they wouldn't have been willing to in the past. So I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you guys for joining me. That's hello from Atlas and Ari. And we are going to continue to nap in the sun and I might do some work and stretch those comfort zones just a little bit. Have a good day, you guys. I will see you next Tuesday.